Okay guys, we're going to spend a little bit of time looking at a computer architecture model. Now remember this is a model, it's not exactly how any individual machine you may encounter works, but it covers all of the concepts and all of the basic elements that exist in almost any machine you're going to encounter. The basic architecture was set in place uh, in the middle of the uh, 20th century by a guy named John von Neumann and he established an architecture for a machine that consisted of some basic building blocks. The first is the control unit. This controls the flow of the instructions through the system. It obtains its instructions from the main memory. An arithmetic logic unit which performs calculations on the data that the control unit uh, tells it to get from the main memory. There's also an input and an output system. How does things from the outside world get into and out of the machine? And in this case, imagine keyboards, disk drives, and monitors. And then we have the main memory, where the instructions and the data are held. Now, the important thing about the von Neumann machine is that it's a stored program machine. So the program and its data are both held in memory in a form that is exactly the same whether it's programs or, or data. There's no separation of programs and data. The main memory consists of a set of storage locations and each storage location has a number and successive storage locations have a number that's one higher than the previous storage location. So in there we can store ins instructions for the program or we can store data for the program and as long as we keep a separation of what's instructions and what's data, our programs will be well managed and will run nicely. Programs can load um, memory locations and they can read from mem memory locations. Memory locations can be loaded with data coming from the outside world and they can copy data from the main memory out to the outside world. Now the architecture that we've just seen is the idealized architecture and here's uh, an Intel Xeon processor, here's the block diagram at the top and you can see it's got many of the same um, elements. It's got storage and I.O. So, to how it talks to the outside world, it's got processors, it's got memory and it has subsystems for interconnecting things. As you can see in the picture below, which is a picture of the actual chip, there's actually multiple cores on there. So there's multiple um, uh, sections of arithmetic logic unit and control unit. There's also some cache, and we'll, we'll talk about cache later, but that's a way to divide the memory up so that the instructions or the data that you need most often is close to the system and doesn't take a long time to get in and out of the arithmetic logic unit. Now, there's a very simple cycle that's executed over and over again in every machine. We fetch an instruction, we decode it, we execute it, and we do something with the result. Now what I've done here is I've broken out the registers from the control unit. I would spend a little bit of time talking about the registers. They normally exist within the control unit or some of the registers exist in the arithmetic logic unit. But to make things following the fetch, decode, and execute cycle a bit easier, I've pulled them out in a separate block. So let's take a look at the registers. The registers are areas of memory that are close to the control unit or the arithmetic logic unit, and they have very fixed um, functions. The ones that we're going to cover here are a program counter, and that points to the next or the current instruction that is being executed. It points to the location in memory where you can get that. The memory address register points to the current location in memory that you might write data to or read data from. The current instruction register holds a copy of the current instruction from memory and that's used so that we can go and get it to decode it um, and find out what the instruction is. And then there's some general purpose registers. And the general purpose registers are there because often the instructions are specific to a register. So we might get an instruction that says load register 1 with this memory address 
add register 1 to register 2, store register 2's results back at this memory address. So let's take a look at the fetch, execute, fetch, decode and execute cycle in detail. In this example we've got a program counter that points to memory location 1045 and in there we have an instruction. We have a memory address register which is pointing to memory location 9250 and we have some data that's already sitting in register 1 and register 2. So now the clock ticks and we start the cycle. The first thing we do is we fetch an instruction. We look at the program counter which says 1045 so we go to memory location 1045 and we take a copy of the data and we copy it into the current instruction register. The next step is to decode that instruction. So we grab that instruction from the current instruction register and we pass it through the electronics that will end up decoding that and working out what that instruction is telling us to do and in this case it says add register 1 to register 2 and put the results in register 3. The next cycle is to get the data for that instruction so we go and get register 1 and register 2 data and we pass it into the arithmetic logic unit where the add instruction is executed and the result is loaded into register 3 we've now finished one cycle. The next thing we do is we go and look at the program counter and we increment it to 1046. We've moved forwards one instruction. We go down and we say now let's look at 1046. We execute the fetch. We get the instruction for 1046 and we load that into the current instruction register overwriting the last instruction. Now we need to decode that instruction and we find that it is store register 3. Now it doesn't say where to store register 3 because it's implied that you store it wherever the memory address register is pointing in this example. So we're going to store it in 9250. Store the results of register 3. So we take the contents of register 3, we copy them, and we put them into 9250. We've now finished that cycle, so we increment the instruction, uh, the program counter, to 1047, and we fetch the instruction again from 1047, and we're off on another execution of the fetch, decode, and execute cycle. Now that was a very simple example and it had a machine which had uh, a very few registers and, and some very simple instruction sets and we did it linearly. We did 1045, 1046, 1047. If our program had some branches, some jumps or if then else type of uh, logic, we would have incremented that program counter in, in more than single increments. We would have moved the, the pointer uh, for the instruction all over the memory. Also, if our memory was um, more complicated and had different caches and maybe had a disk drive, um, there may be many more complex actions that go on in order to get the, the actual data that you need. But this is a simple example because fundamentally inside every machine that you're, you're using, that cycle of fetch an instruction, decode it and execute it is happening over and over again. In some machines it might happen every clock cycle, which means if you have a 3 gigahertz system, then that cycle is happening 3 billion times a second. And if you had a 3 gigahertz system and 4 separate uh, CPUs in your chip, then it's going to happen 4 times 3 billion times per second if all of the uh, um, cores are used and all of the cores are running at the same speed. So remember, this is a model, but it is the fundamental fetch, execute, decode, uh, fetch, decode, and execution cycle. And it takes place on the instructions that are uh, placed into the main memory as a result of compiling your program that you write. So your Java uses a whole different instruction set, but what it ends up doing through a lot of compilation exercises that the, mach that the software that you use does for you, it ends up translating all of that into ones and zeros and putting it in main memory 
and then everything goes through the fetch, decode, and execute cycle.